It is September the 5th, <coughs> 2021, uh, about 12.20 in the afternoon at lunchtime here. And uh, I want to talk about this part of uh, God's school. Oh, once saved, always saved, and how untrue that is. Uh, I know that Michelle and I both have been taught, because of our religious background, that once you're saved, you're always saved, and no matter what, um, you'll never lose your, your salvation. And I'm going to tell you how wrong that is today in this video by giving you uh, <coughs> some examples of people in the Bible and Bible scriptures that just tell you that it's not true. But because of what we've been taught from whoever it is, we tend to think that we get a free ticket into heaven, and that's just not true. <clears throat> so, it's true that, that you have a free gift of salvation from Jesus Christ as long as you accept him. But that's only the first part of the life that you now lead. But we have a tendency to think that once we get that free ticket, that salvation, that we can do whatever we want. Okay? Well, let's go back to Genesis where... Abraham was told to go to a land that he had no idea that of where that land was, but God said, go. All right? He took what God said literally, and he moved his family, including Lot and his wife, to a land that God was going to tell him in the future. Okay, <clears throat> that is a representation of, of faith-based salvation in the Old Testament. And we tend to think that, okay, God's going to tell us what to do, like Abraham, or we get saved and we're good. But once Abraham started following God like that, God started telling him everything to do when he wanted him to do it. He didn't tell him, all right, now you're saved. Okay, you're listening to me right now, but don't worry about listening to me later. Okay, so in other words, we can't assume that once we accept Christ as our Savior, we don't have to do anything else to continue to have that salvation. Okay? So Abraham had to, had to listen to God so closely that toward the end of his the story in the Bible about Abraham, he, he took his only son up to sacrifice him without knowing exactly what he was going to go do. He knew he was going to go sacrifice something, but then he gets up there and there's no lamb or nothing but the wood that him and Isaac brought. 
So God was testing him to see if he was going to continue to endure the, the pain of losing his son or follow him. And we tend to, to skew that story to the point that we we don't we don't think that it's God testing us in our faith <clears throat> at some level. And we are the same way thousands of years later at this point that God doesn't test us. See, God, once we go into a relationship with Jesus Christ, God puts us into his school. Okay? Just like when we are, we go into first grade in human school, okay? We can, we can, either do the work that the teacher tells us or we don't pass okay but I think it I think the real testing and I think this is real I think it's really applies to a Christian life as well is those first couple of years you're learning your ABC's and your numbers in the first couple of years that most Christians are after getting saved they're learning their ABC's and numbers with God they're learning how to listen to him they're learning what the Bible says <clears throat> and and so forth but when it starts about third grade or fourth grade mm -hmm. the testing becomes real the it's, testing, like, it's the, like when you're reading God's Word and you can read it and read it and read it you know even the first couple of grade school years, you don't understand it. Right. But as you grow and mature and you, you know, get to different grades, different, you know, levels of maturity, that's when God starts giving you the understanding, just like you would be in a human school. You know, the more you grow, the more you understand and you comprehend. Exactly. And, and when you get to that, next level, that third or fourth grade level in human school, mm -hmm. the testing actually becomes real. And if you don't pass every test, at the end of the school year, what happens? You fail. You fail. Now, the Bible says that in Psalms 94, 14, if you'll look that up, <clears throat> What does it say? Uh, Psalm 24, 14. The Lord will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special his special possession. His special possessions. What does Isaiah 41, 10 say? It says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my righteous, my victorious right hand. So... In both of those verses, it talks about God not forsaking us and to not fear because he's going to strengthen us. Okay? What it doesn't say is this. It doesn't say that we're not going to fail. Okay? In other words, if we don't learn the lessons of our life for each level that we go through in our Christian life with God, the school that he's put us in, we don't pass that grade level, okay? So we have to endure to the end of that grade level and throughout our whole life. School with God never ends. No, but it's, Never like, ends. it's like you're in grade school, human grade school, that as you get older, you realize, I mean, because you're not going to have the same, 
curriculum in your 12th grade year as you would your kindergarten year. Absolutely. So as you progress in in maturity or in your grade school level and your level of relationship with Christ, the testing becomes more refined. Right. It comes more becomes more refined. So at the third grade, fourth grade level, when the testing really begins mm -hmm. in God's school, you would we're like Habakkuk. In Habakkuk one five, Habakkuk or or before verse five, Habakkuk's complaining to God mm -hmm. that God, why why is all of this happening? And God's reply to him is what? Uh, the Lord replied, Look around at the nations, look and be amazed. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. So how does that apply to what we're talking about? It applies in this way. We can't see what God's doing in our lives when we're at third and fourth grade level. You know, our comprehension level, if we were given something then on a 12th grade level, we wouldn't understand. That's right. But yeah, a, a, a third or fourth grader can't do it's college work. Calculus and algebra, uh, they don't it's understand not possible. It. So God can't give us everything that we're going to endure throughout our whole life right when we get saved okay but it's up it's up to us to pass the each one of those tests that he gives us for us to be able to see him in heaven to hear him in heaven to touch him in heaven but up until then at the end of our life or the end of time we have to rely on our faith like Abraham to be able to know that he's there to know that he's talking to us and for the hope that we are going to touch him one day like Thomas did wanted to touch we can't be like Thomas in our human lives because that doesn't have faith in it. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... We, we can't say, Hey, Michelle, you're real. You know? By just touching. Mm -hmm. You know? We can, but in the instance of our spiritual lives, we don't have that, Jesus, you're real. Yeah. We have to rely on on not our five senses right we can't but the senses that he gives you are your spiritual eyes and your you know the, the spiritual you can feel his presence sure that's absolutely but that comes with maturity in your salvation as well with your relationship with him you know and and god got, gives us his bible his word, his living word for us to be able to, uh, oh, I love it when the breeze hits us as we're talking, mm -hmm. making videos, that's so cool. <laughs> he gives us his instructions and a format, a platform for us to go by. You know, we were having a discussion before getting on video about mm -hmm. God you had said something about building a table. Right. Well, before I get to that, the, you had said something about the testing and stuff on the grade level. Now, there are many people, many people, including myself and yourself, that we keep enduring the same test over and over and over again. Yep. But it's just like in grade school, if you don't pass the test and you have to repeat the grade, they give you the same thing over and over again until you pass it. That's right. So, in our spiritual lives, in our, in our relationship with Christ, if if he's trying to teach us something and we're not learning what he is trying to teach us in that situation, it's going to keep coming on. Sure. And 
that's going to, and until we learn that particular lesson that he, he is trying to teach us, then we're going to keep enduring the same test over and over and over again. Absolutely. Which which is kind of like well, what you had talked about with the table before we started making this video. Right. So there was a, the devotional that I had read this morning, and it was talking about um, uh, a young lady, I think in a youth, one of the youth, I believe, in the, in the devotional, was talking to her pastor about uh, she had tried to witness to people at school, and, you know, they kept give, asking her questions that she didn't know the answers to, and the main one was about hell. Right. And why would a loving God um, send people to hell? And then he was talking about um, it, the free gift. God would give us a free gift. And, um, you know, he gives us this free gift. And, and we are to choose it or not to choose it. It's not the fact that God is sending us to hell. He is giving us a choice. We can either choose him and our lives through him, with him, by him, abide in him in every form and fashion, or we can choose the other path that leads to hell. Because if we don't choose the relationship and everything that it involves to go and be with him, because I mean, if you're not willing to be with him on earth, why would he want you there in heaven if you didn't want to spend any time with him on earth? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, you know, we're choosing, if we're choosing our own ways, you know, down our own path, that is not going to lead to a path that is going to be with him. So, we're choosing uh, to do our own thing. But what I was telling Melvin earlier was, you know, we're not going to be given a, a reward for choosing our own way. You know, he gives us a reward for following him, following his instructions, following his will. Yep. So I was telling Melvin of the example of, uh, before he even said anything to me, actually, um, of a, a group of kids, and they are given an, an assignment to do. All it is is as simple as building a table. Not next, You've got a square top and four legs. That's all it is. And you are given of where to go get the materials, and all you got to do is get those five materials, the four legs and the top, and screw the screw the legs on, flip it over, and there's your table. So you have a group of kids that are going to choose to follow the instructions, to do what they're asked, to go get, do, build, and receive the reward, and then you have those that will say, I don't want to waste my time with this, and they walk away instead of doing a simple task such as that. Now, the same thing with our spiritual life. If we choose to go and do and th do the things that God wants us to do and asks us to do and for us to follow the instructions of his book and to do what he asks, then we get the reward. Right. Why do we need a reward for something we didn't even bother doing? So in other words, what you're saying is is if you don't follow God's God's word, which is our instructions on how to live a godly life in the Bible, you can't build the table. Correct. But it's the same thing as Abraham. You were talking about Abraham. But it's not like he was doing this one thing, he got there and he was done. Right. It was a continuous conversation. And it wasn't the point where Abraham was doing the talking. Right. He was doing the listening to right. know where he was going to go. Right. You know, instead of us being the people of our our own lives and going, well, God, I want this, 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 and this. And then you run off. Right. Abraham was the exact opposite. He was quiet and still, and he listened for God mm -hmm. to listen to know what he wanted him to do. Right. To build his table for God. Right. You know, and... And, you know, that just, that whole building of a table for a young child, for a group of young children to know how to build a table is not easy if they haven't 
read the instructions. Mm -hmm. You know? That they were told the instructions, given the people, instructions. People, and that's a perfect example of us listening to people mm -hmm. and not fully listening and doing what we're told. Right. <clears throat> you know, in a parent child relationship, there are a lot of times the child doesn't listen well. Oh, they get half of what you say. They get half of it, <laughs> oh. and then they can't complete the task that you gave them, which in this particular instance is building the table. They've been provided the material, but without somebody going step by step and staying right there on top of them, mm -hmm. they don't finish the task. If you're not told specifically, okay, you go to this place, get this item, go to this place, get this item. And God sometimes doesn't work like that. Mm -mm. Sometimes he does, but a lot of times he wants to say, all right, Michelle, I told you what to do. Now it's up to you to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's where the and maturity then, and the relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are guided. And, and, and when he does that, he goes, okay, let me step back right here. Okay, All right. now it's your turn. Do what I say. And that's funny that you do that because, and I, and I love the movie God's Not Dead too. the one where the, the lady that's going through the trial, she says, you know, I don't feel like God is near me. God is, is, is even around me or something like that. And then her grandfather says, well, you should know, because she's a teacher, you should know more than anybody that the teacher is always quiet during the test. Sure. So, you doing that, stepping back, that's what he does. Exactly. So. And, that, and that just, all of this that we're talking about is, is how God deals with us to see if we continue to be saved. You know, the, the once saved, always saved. If you listen to what we've been saying so far, it's not even possible that it can happen. No, because, because you can't because, say, I believe, I believe. And then not do. And then, yeah, you don't, you don't read his instructions. You don't do what he's asking. If that's, you know, if that's not a relationship, it's right. called a relationship. You know, Read John 15, uh, 2 through 4. Listen to, listen to what it says here, guys. Where are you at? John 15, 15? Okay. 2 through 4. All right. Let me start with one. That kind of explains it. You what two. It says, I am, this is Jesus' words, it's in red. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he well let me stop there now he says every branch of mine so what does that mean that means you are a saved person you are his you're his okay but he cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit okay what does the second part of verse 2 say? And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. That's called God's school. That's the testing and That's maturing. That's the testing, the maturing of a true believer. Right. The growing and, in your relationship and with him. And to see if you're going to get to the next grade level, which means you pass that grade, you pass that test, to remain in him okay. see there's going to be a lot of believers that get to a certain grade level with God and say I'm done this mm -hmm. is too hard I quit all right so three and four say you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you the okay. task the, the doing the message starts with hearing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. tell you You've got to accept Jesus as your Savior <clears throat> to be able to get into the school and do what God is saying, which is remain in Him and produce fruit for Him, not fruit for us, right. not 
our will, yeah. but God's will. Fruit for God. That's that's the whole part that we miss as believers is we think we get saved. Oh my goodness, I can go right back to what I was doing what? now before I got saved and I got my free ticket. I'm going to heaven. Well, that's what I said. You're, <clears throat> you're thinking bearing fruit is for you. It's your reward. It's your prize, so to speak. Right. And it's your free ticket. That's your prize. Right. But that's not right. No, not at all. Not at all. So, yeah. Now, ahead. now, now, verse four. I love the first three words. Remain in me. Which is staying in school. And I will remain in you. So if you... You will continue to teach so in if, school. Now, wait a second. So if you don't remain and keep doing as in what he wants, mm -hmm. then he won't be in you. Which, so, therefore, so, the Holy so Spirit remain. has now... He's now removed okay. his so, presence. So read that again. Rem read it. Re 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 read it one more time. Remain in me, okay. and I will remain in you. Okay. So... The first couple of verses that we read was about God not forsaking us, mm -hmm. and what? And fear not. Fear not, and He'll strengthen you. And, and that's right. Yes. Yeah. So, what those what those verses didn't say that I said was it doesn't say that we don't fail. Okay, right there. Remain in me. If you don't remain in him, you fail. And that don't mean that you've uh, that you've, you've messed up or something. Just like I was saying the other day. You know, I, I let Satan get a hold of me the other day. And I told Miller, I said, I've just, I've failed. And that's just what I felt like. Because I allowed Satan to get a hold of me. But at the same time, you know, afterwards, and I kind of calmed down and kind of got in his word. And just kind of remember the words that God told me. And then, and then that's where he got to show me that, you know, there are certain things in my life I don't fail. I just allow to happen because of of a thought or something that in and that was another devotional that I had read the other day. We take our eyes off of it. Right, and there was a devotional I said the other day that I had a, you know, it don't take but just a thought, and that's where Satan. As soon as you have that thought, he's got his foot in the door. Oh, he's done got it wedged to where he can squeeze his way in, and that's how simple it is or if somebody says something to you there's a foothold right. and he's got it right. and it's not that I mean if you have the thought and do it and if you don't repent and you and continue to, to desire and after after God and his will for your life if you let that continue and you just run the other direction that isn't that is not remaining in him no that's turning, and if you completely abandon what he's trying to teach you in that instance. So the failing that you're talking about that you had is not a failing of losing your salvation. No, it the, was a the failing, failing of the testing. The failing is a, a simple test. Like I was saying, you, you keep repeating that, until God, until that you, you learn. Failed, mm -hmm. That you failed to remain in him. Right. Okay. And he'll keep it doesn't teaching mean you that. that you have totally lost oh, your no, salvation. No. That means that you just failed that little bitty test yeah. that God allowed to happen Correct. in your life that gets you to the next level. Right. Like I said a while ago, oh, you, get you, keep, to the you, next keep, you have to keep repeating that same thing until it's what God wants you to learn. Sure. Same thing with sure. our schoolwork. It is with our spiritual work, our spiritual life. And it, and it doesn't, and it doesn't mean that he has forsaken us. No. It doesn't mean that that he has abandoned us. But he gets quiet, like we're yeah. talking about in the test, and lets you go. Okay, God, this isn't from you. I'm not going to pay attention to this anymore. What's scary, though, and what people should really, really, really think about is the part where God stops testing you. When you don't have that check in your spirit. When 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 you don't feel God is testing you anymore. <clears throat> like somebody said that this past week, I told Melvin, I think it was or last week, uh, they had a good week, nothing happened. 
and we both automatically go. Ooh. Oh, as soon as that person said that when to you me, told me that, I was like. You know, as soon as somebody said that to me, I went, "Oh my goodness!" See, if God's not testing oh, you, goodness. if you're not being tested, and 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 allowing Him to test you and grow you, <coughs> that should automatically be a red flag. See, we're not any different than the people in the Bible that were tested over and over and over. You know, I mean, look at David. David was a man after God's own heart. And how many times in the stories of David and the Psalms of David was he in anguish and despair that, God, where are you? What, what's going on? Why, 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 why? Mm -hmm. All the time. If you read that. But then... He completes that that anguish time time that he has, and the next Psalms may be he's praising he's and praising and, and worshiping, yep. worshiping God, and going. I see now. I see. But see, David's a perfect example, though, because of what he did in his in in, in school. We're going to talk about the same thing that we're talking about. God's school. He failed God in the in the aspect of, of his sins. Sure. Therefore, who was who who built the temple and not him? Yep. Because of his sin with he Bathsheba, not, he was he, not rewarded. He, he to build the temple. So let's talk about that just a second. David looked upon Bathsheba and lusted after her to the point that he went to bed with her and she had his baby, got pregnant. And then killed her husband. And too. killed her husband mm -hmm. so that he could try to cover up the sin. Right. Okay? But that sin never went away the rest of his life. Yeah. To the point that God had already told him to build a temple. Mm -hmm. Okay? But because of that sin, yep. God would not allow him to build the temple. Yep. It was his son. second son, mm -hmm. it was Solomon. Solomon, not the one that was, because the one that he the committed first... adultery with yeah. died. Correct. So it was his second God, son. God punished Bathsheba. David two times, mm -hmm. I say two times, in two ways right. for not, for, for being so sinful at that time. He took his son, and he wouldn't let him build the temple. Right. Okay? It's not that he, he <coughs> it's not that he punished him two times. It was one continuous sin mm -hmm. that led to multiple events that he wasn't allowed to fulfill that he should have. Okay? But at the same time, he was given, he was going to be rewarded in this way, but he chose his own way, therefore the reward was taken away. But but what happened? David had to repent. See, that's what all over of this and over and over. <laughs> that's, that's what that's what a a life of a Christian is all about. If you think that you're saved and you can commit sin after that without repenting of that sin, you're dead wrong. You're going straight to hell, my friend. It's not going to happen. But if you repent and you don't continue to do that same sin over and over and over that you repented of, that's when you get to go to the next level of school with mm -hmm. God. You know? Okay, uh, you made a good point. Now, when Jesus was on the cross... God turned his head because he took on the sins of everybody. Of everybody. Because God, president God can't be in the presence of sin. That's so, right. therefore, if we choose to not follow God's path and, and mature and grow and go to the next level in each grade with him, and we choose this other path, we can't automatically assume 
that if we keep on sinning and doing our own thing, that we can go up and be in the presence of Him. It's not possible. Right. Because our sin, right. we kept on doing, 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 and that is still with Him because we hadn't repented and turned to Him. Which is John 9, 31 all over again. Right. God doesn't listen to sinners. Okay? That's anybody that's saved or not saved. Because okay? we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. The only... The only prayer that God hears from that from the sinner if you're unsaved is the prayer of save me Jesus save me but at the same time the you're other, repenting of your sins to be the, saved the other the believer that saved that has been in sin and continues to sin is the repent is a sin of I mean the prayer of a repentance Okay, so until that is done, the second part of that verse says he is willing and ready to listen to a righteous person mm -hmm. and does his will. He won't listen to you if you've got sin in your life, unforgiveness, adultery, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it don't it is. matter. You have to repent of it. You know, it's a... It may not be named in the Bible as a sin, what your sin is. No, because if it's something that God is convicting you of and you a, continue to do it, then that's a sin and that's specifically that's right. for you. That's right. Like, he told you not eat bread. Right. If you eat, eat bread, it's a sin. If you feel convicted of it and he's told you not to do it. Right. Something as simple as that. It's something specifically. It's what's called a, a personal relationship. It's not because between you, me, and him... It's between you and him. Right. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, there's going to be a lot of people that think that this is absurd. This lesson here is absurd. And because they have been taught by their parents, their school teacher, their pastor their Sunday school teacher, whoever it is they've come across, and <clears throat> they have said, once you get saved, it could be a street preacher, it don't matter who it is. Once you get saved, you're saved, you're going to heaven no matter what. But, but, that, but that's what you said earlier about being taught by somebody. Where is the, Where in lies the problem of how you've been taught? Yep. You know, because if you've been <coughs> taught by somebody else, what are you personally not doing? You're not listening to God. You're not in His Word, word learning what He wants you to learn right. in His instruction book. Because what you're doing is you're allowing somebody else to read the book and interpret it, interpret it their way instead of you getting in God's book and saying, Okay, God, I don't understand it. Would you... Show, show me, me, show me, teach me what this means in your word, right? And that's the problem because right. people rely on, and and even with us doing this video, don't rely on what we're saying. Won't you dig in His word and ask Him to reveal it to you? Absolutely. That's what and, you're supposed to do. You know, John six forty five says, "You know, will all be taught by God." You'll be taught by God, and those come to me, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Those you who know? learn from. Him, being God, come to me, which is Jesus. Right. Right. You know, they, it doesn't say that you learn from man. No. So here's the example that I'm going to give you. Uh, we're going to try to end this as quick as possible. In Jude, chapter 1, it's only one chapter. It's not but like 21, 22 verses. But in chapter 1, the only chapter, verse 12, mm -hmm. <clears throat> It says what? Read that verse for us. It says, when, it's a really long verse, and I, when I read it, I was like, that's one verse. When these people eat with you in their fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. They are like trees in autumn that are doubly dead.
for they bear no fruit and have pull, been pulled up by the roots. Okay, so let's break that verse down. Read that first part. So, when these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. Okay, so what does that part of that verse mean? This is anybody that teaches you only part of the Word of God, which is, right now, this is rampant all over the world. God is on. God is love. God is love. God is love. God well, is love. Well, that's the same as what this the, this first two parts, because there's a the, comma between it. Now, the, the first part says, when these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commem commemorating the Lord's love, and they stop. Right. That's what I'm talking about. They they go to church, and they hear God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. You get the warm and fuzzy. <clears throat> you get the warm and fuzzy about who God is and what God is about. But the second part of that says they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. So in other words, these teachers, whether it be a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a teacher in school, your, your parents, anybody that you run across, your parents, anybody, it doesn't matter who this person is, or what their affiliation with anything is. <clears throat> if they tell you that God is only love, they're not telling the whole truth. They're telling you only part of it. And what does it say? It says right there that it's going to shipwreck you. It's going to destroy you. They forget the part where <clears throat> God is a jealous God and a just judge. Sure. So what does the what does this next sentence say? They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. Ooh. Okay. So shameless shepherds? Who are shepherds that the Bible speaks about? Those are pastors and people that teach the word of God. These are specific. Right. Okay? Because people, they have a care of flock <laughs> under their care. They they have a group of people, no matter how big or small, it right. could be one person, okay? <coughs> but if you're teaching the Word of God in your own family, right. you are a shepherd of that family. Mm -hmm. And if you only teach God as love, you just became exactly like these people are. You're like a cloud that don't have any rain in it. You're just blowing hot air. Mm -hmm. it, it's clear as day right there yep. that it's these people are false teachers. They're false prophets. They're false pastors. They're not shepherding over a flock as God wants. Okay? And yep. they're only teaching you that once saved, always saved is the warm and fuzzy of God's love. They're not teaching, remain in me, okay? I know there are religious groups, and I'm not going to name any of them, uh, that you're affiliated with, that that's what they teach. And it's just totally not true. You know? It's, they teach a half-truth, but they what teach, is a half-truth, though? It's a lie. Right. Because <clears throat> it's not the full it's truth a, of it's God's a, word. It's a lie. You when know? you take a certain which, scripture which, and you where only does do... the lie, Which, where does the lie come from? It comes from Satan. Yeah. Okay. But if you're only teaching half a verse, half of God's word, you're picking and choosing what you want to teach, which is the warm and fuzzy. Right. That's, no. that's a lie. No. Where, where, do, where, do, where does this verse end? All right. It says, they are like trees in the autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. Okay, so let's so let's break this last part of this verse down. The trees, <clears throat> okay? These are pastors, teachers, uh, parents, doesn't matter, I mean, and believers. Any kind of mentor under yeah. a teaching of anybody. And also believers. Right. This is where the believers come in. 
because they have listened to these lies that Satan has put in churches or put in people's words <clears throat> that once saved, always saved. You don't have to worry about anything else. And God is just love, you know. He's going to bless you and he's going to do this and all of that. That's, that's where this part comes in. It says the trees... Well, are out. like autumn, yeah, and their leaves fall off basically, okay, and they're doubly dead. So, right. what's doubly dead mean? Okay, this totally does away. This these few words right here totally does away with the once saved, always saved right here. The first death is before you're saved. Okay, until you accept Jesus as your Savior. You're dead. Which is called, when you accept Christ, you're reborn. You're reborn. Born again, which means you had to have been dead That's to begin right. with to be to be reborn or <clears throat> born again. And then, the second death, doubly dead, the second death is what? If you don't remain in him and do what? What does see, it say? See, it says, for they bear no fruit. No fruit for God. Which goes back to John 15, where he will cut off the branches that do not produce fruit. Now, the last part of this verse is very interesting. Okay? <clears throat> it says, And have been pulled up by the roots. So, what does that mean? That means when you pull a plant up out of the ground... There's no possible way it can come back to life. Right. It now, if you can't cut it off at the it. if you cut it off at the base, it still has the roots underneath there, and it can regrow. It it will branch out from the roots. Right. Some from the roots, some from where it was cut off. So therefore, this is not saying you're cut off. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is actually saying, it, it's not chopped down, oh, this pulled is up pulled up. Where do those people in John 15, 6 go that it talks about? In John 15, 6, it ta says anybody that does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Burned. Where is burned? That's in hell, guys. That's in hell. If you don't remain in Jesus Christ and listen to him on a second-by-second -second basis every single day, you're not going to make it. See, when you're pulled you're up by the roots, make though, this just came the, the, the soil, the earth, that is your relationship with God. That's what holds you together. Sure. And it's it's what holds your relation. That is your relationship, and that's how you're allowed to grow. Right. When you are pulled away from it, you can't go that's, back. That's that's death. Very few will make it into heaven for this reason: they don't remain in Jesus Christ. They don't remain in Jesus Christ to get to heaven. Well, and another sad part about it is, is they're not taught. They're not taught They're not correctly. taught correctly how to remain in him because of the false teachers on earth. They're given these false teachers and preachers. Street preachers, it don't matter. You know... It don't matter who they are. If they're not teaching what God's Word says correctly, you know, it's like the rapture. That's a whole different video. It's another video, <laughs> but I will touch on this. The rapture is not going to happen before the tribulation happens. It's not. The Bible clearly says it. If you dig and you learn what it says and you read what it says there's an example after example after example after example when God says 
I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Why do you think that he's going to change at the end of time and rapture believers out of a tribulation or a test to remain in him, endure to the end? Well, it's not going to happen. If, Jesus said it over and over and over. And Paul, that wrote my, almost half of the, of the New Testament, New Testament yeah. said it over and over and over. Endure to the end. Finish the race. Well, my thing is, just, is the fact that even with the, the the school and stuff, you know, you know, we don't, we can't have to keep going through twelfth grade and then we keep going to college and then we keep going, we keep learning, we keep maturing. But if God says. You know, if you get to the point like sixth grade and, and you're like, I'm done, you know, God, I'm, I'm, I'm all out. So he lets you out and you don't endure to the end, even in life. You know, even with Christ, he endured to the end. He w w went through all of the testing, everything that he endured. And what if he got to the end and goes, all right, I'm, I'm done. I, I want out. Just, you know, just let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. All right. Now, he endured through all of that suffering and 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 god raised him from the dead right. okay if christ endured all of that suffering mm -hmm. why do we think we are any more special than the son of god we're not that we can just be coast taken taken out of the suffering and not endure right. the tribulation why do we think we are any better than Christ? We're not. Exactly. We're not. So that is going to be our suffering, our our crucifixion, so to speak, because of the beating, the tr the tribulations, the trials, and the persecution. You know, if we're supposed yep. to be Christ-like, why do I not think that we're going to endure Christ-like trials and tribulations? Right. Guys, the whole point of this video is is don't believe the lie that Satan has put in people's mouths mm -hmm. that tell you that once saved, always saved is true. Read the scriptures. Read the verses that God says over and over and over, endure to the end, remain in me. Allow the I'm going to pull teacher. you up. I'm going to pull you up. Mm -hmm. That part of Jude, uh, verse 12, is talking about the false teachers, the false prophets, okay, that are coming, that's going to trick people into believing something. And then the very next section of that book of Jude talks about remaining in him remaining in in God remaining faithful to him mm -hmm. okay there's a reason it's in that order guys okay you're going to endure people telling you only part of the Bible only the part only part of the truth mm -hmm. guys dig please dig 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 into God's Word and read it for yourself. Let God give you the understanding that Michelle and I have gotten from God mm -hmm. that it's not true. It's not true that once saved, always saved. It's not true. Allow You've the true teacher to teach you. <clears throat> Absolutely. The Absolutely. one true teacher. Because we only have one true teacher that can teach us. And who is that? That's the Father. That's the Father. And, and he, he does uses it the, and Holy he uses Spirit. Holy Spirit mm -hmm. Because Jesus left the earth. Right. And left his spirit. Why did Jesus leave the why did Jesus have to leave the earth? Think about this, guys. Jesus in human form couldn't be all over this world at one single time. Right. But the Holy Spirit can be mm -hmm. all over the world at one single time. Jesus couldn't be because he was a, in human form. Yep. When he left, 
he sent the Holy Spirit so that he could cover the whole world at one time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very interesting topic. But allow <clears throat> the true teacher to teach you. Not me. Not me. No. But the Father. Guys, I hope this touched you in a way that it was meant to touch you. And that me and Michelle were able to explain it the best way that we humanly possibly could through the word, us. the words that God has given us, yeah. and the teaching that came from Him has taught us. It's just an encouragement to go and allow Him to teach you as well. Please don't be fooled. Don't yeah. be fooled by this lie of once saved always saved it's just not true 